Hi, now this is a follow-up exercise to my previous video where I showed you how we could define a point in polar coordinates given its Cartesian coordinates. If we had Cartesian coordinates for point P, X, Y, then we could convert it to polar coordinates R theta knowing that R was equal to the square root of X squared plus Y squared and that theta was equal to the inverse tan of y over x. Now, with this exercise here, especially with parts two and parts three, care has got to be taken over finding theta. So, if you'd like to have a go at these, okay, I'll give you a moment just to pause the video. And uh, when you're done, just come back and you can check your work solutions with mine. Okay, welcome back then if you had a go. So let's just quickly run through these. For this one here, P having coordinates 12, 5, what I'm going to do is just quickly sketch this. We've got our Y axis and we've got our X axis. And for all these questions, I would strongly recommend sketching the diagram. So We've got our point P, let's say it's 12 across 5 up, let's say it's there, P 12, 5. And we've got now to find out what R is, that'd be that length across there. And we've also got to find out what the angle theta is here. Now, we know that if this is coordinates 12, 5, then this is 12 units along there, and that's five units up. So we can get R quite easily just by Pythagoras' theorem. So if we do that, you should know this just straight off anyway. It's the 5, 12, 13 triangle. But if not, it's going to be the square root of 12 squared plus five squared. And if you work that out, it's the square root of 169, which is 13. And as for the angle theta, well, theta is going to equal the inverse tan of the opposite side, which is 5, over the adjacent side, which is 12. Inverse tan of 5 twelfths. And if we were to work this out in degrees, you'd find it comes to 22.6 degrees to one decimal place. And that means that, therefore, we can put P in polar coordinates as being R, which is 13, and then theta, which is 22.6 degrees. Now, it's not the only way that we could express P in polar coordinates. It's this angle here, theta. We could go the other way round, okay, in a clockwise sense, which, remember, I pointed out to you, is always the negative angle. So we could say that P could be R, which is 13, but the angle would be minus 337.4 degrees if we went in a clockwise sense, okay? 360 degrees minus the 22.6. Mind you, I do prefer that one. I always prefer using positive angles, but you will see occasionally negative angles used. Okay, well, that's that one. Now let's move on to the second one here, P being at the point minus four, minus three. So again, I just want to draw up my axis. So we'll have our Y axis there, okay? And we'll have our X axis something like this, okay? So when it comes to the point minus four, minus three, we're gonna go four units that way, three units down. So there's our point P, okay? Coordinates minus four, minus three. And so we've got R is going to be this value down here. And what I'm looking for this time is if I'm looking for a positive angle, it's going to be starting from here, going all the way around to here. So what I'm going to do is work out what this acute angle in here is. I'll call it alpha, 
okay and then we'll be able to get what theta is so from this if I just construct this triangle in here okay then this length here is four units this length down here is three units so when it comes to working out what R is R is going to be by Pythagoras' theorem it's the well-known 3, 4, 5 triangle but if we're not sure of that it's going to be the square root of 3 squared plus 4 squared which is the square root of 25 which is 5 okay we're only concerned with length by the way so we don't take plus or minus okay so it's just 5 units there as for alpha alpha is going to be equal to the inverse tan of the opposite over the adjacent side so it's going to be three quarters okay and if you work that out in degrees mode might remember ask you to work it out in radians mode so just switch your calculator over to radians if that were the case but if you work this one out it comes out at 36.869 and so on degrees we need to get theta, we'll put theta in here, theta is going to be this angle all the way around to there, just mark that in as theta, so therefore theta is going to be equal to 180 degrees plus the 36.869 and so on degrees, okay? And if you work that out, that comes to 216.9 degrees, to one decimal place. Now again we can express P in polar coordinates in say two ways here. We could turn in an anti-clockwise sense, the positive sense, and we would therefore have P has polar coordinates 5, the R value, and theta will take us 216.9 degrees okay to 1dp there but we could say that that's identical also to taking p as having polar coordinates 5 but if we turn in a clockwise sense here then this angle would be minus 180 plus angle alpha 36.869 that will give us a negative turn here turning out to be minus 143 0.1 degrees to 1 dp. Okay? Right, so I uh, hope you're getting that. And uh, again, if you'd like to uh, pause the video at the moment, if you haven't done so already, you might feel like uh, having a go at this last one. Okay, well, we'll, we'll turn to that one now. And uh, just again, we'll go for a sketch on this point P. P being at 1 minus root 3. So for our sketch, we'll have our y-axis, okay, and our x-axis costs like this. So y there. So p is at 1 across and root 3 down. So put it down there then. Okay, p has coordinates 1 and minus root 3. So again, if we're looking for r, Okay, it's not drawn to scale here, but uh, hopefully you get the drift of what's going on. Okay, so that's one unit across, and then root three units down. We need to work out what R is. Again, I've picked all these triangles in here, so you should be familiar with them. This is often what we call the triangle. One is to two is to root three, okay? Triangle, but again, as I say, if you weren't sure of that, just use Pythagoras' theorem. R would be equal to the square root then of the sum of the squares of these two sides. That's one squared plus root three squared. And that turns out to be the root of four, which we know is two. And we're going to need to work out theta. Theta would be this angle all the way around here if we took it in the positive sense. So I'm going to need to work out this angle in here, which we'll call alpha. And to get alpha, alpha would be equal to the inverse tan of root 3 over 1. Okay, root 3 over 1. 
And if you inverse tan, essentially root three, you end up with 60 degrees. Okay, so what does that make P in polar coordinates? Well, P will be two. And then if we turn around here, in an anti-clockwise sense, that's going to be 360 degrees minus 60, which will be 300 degrees. Or you could turn in a clockwise sense, but you've got to remember that the angle will be negative, okay? And that will be minus 60 degrees. So you can have P as 2 minus 60 degrees. So I hope that's given you some idea of how we can represent a point then in polar coordinates and the different ways that we can express the angle, okay? That was really the main point behind this uh, particular video, just getting you used to that idea.